Welcome to this video, my name is Barry Beckham. The subject here is the breakout technique, where we take a part of the content of the image and allow it to overspill into the frame. To demonstrate the breakout technique, I thought I'd use this image which we've seen before in these videos. I'm going to remove the lock to separate the image from the canvas to make a start. Then I need to determine which part of the image I want to have hanging out over the frame. I'm going to pick up my rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to click at the top left because I just want a little bit of the wing of the Angel of the North sticking out into the frame. So the first thing I need to do is to determine how much, and let's assume this is what I've chosen. I need to cut what's within that selection with Control X or Edit Cut from the menu top left. Then I need to hit Edit Paste, which is Control V, to paste it back in place, or Edit Paste from the menu at the top. Then with the Move tool, I need to move this back into the position it came from. Just for a moment, we'll just turn off the bottom layer. Because what we've got to do is remove the sky from around the part of the wing we can see here. Now if I pick up the magic wand tool, because we're working with a silhouette, we're making life pretty easy for ourselves. Whatever part of whatever image we have hanging over the frame, we may need to be able to cut around some complex subjects but here it's pretty easy let's click well not so easy but all the problem is here is the tolerance is a bit too high so hit control D let's drop my tolerance down to 10 it's because we've got a dark corner of the image so if I click now you can see it's picked up pretty well what I want to do is to cut away all of what's around that wing, so I need to inverse it. Control shift i is a shortcut, but select inverse. And then, possibly I would soften the edge of that line just a tiny amount with select and mask. Maybe one pixel or even half a pixel, 0 0.5 is I think the lowest we can go down to. I'll output that back out to our selection and immediately hit Control X. Now when I turn on my background layer here, we've got a little tiny gap caused by that slight feathering of the selection. So I'm going to zoom in quite large just to make sure that when I select this layer and the Move tool, if I just nudge it a little bit to the right, you can see I've just taken up the gap for that thin line that we may see. But from time to time when I zoom out, there you can see it and it looks like something's gone wrong. But it's just the way the screen is resolving detail. When I zoom in, I get to certain magnifications and we can see it's not there. So for the moment, just ignore what you're seeing. What we need then is a canvas increase around the other three sides. You've already got it here, probably got too much, but we need to increase the canvas top, bottom and on the right. At the moment we're not sure how much we want, so my guess is we just add more than we need and then crop back. So I'm going to go to image, canvas size, what shall I give it here? I'll give it, let's try five inches on the height, and I'll try two inches on the width on the right and I'll just anchor my image to where it currently is. Hit Control Zero and I've made a, another technical error there. You'll notice that I didn't pay enough attention and what I've done is selected pixels rather than inches. So Control Z, no worries, let's go back in and we'll have another go at that. Thinking about uh, how much size I want without looking at the way I was measuring the amount I was going to apply. 
so what did I say I said on the height I said five inches on the width I said about two let's anchor that to the left hand side click OK hit control zero well we can see what we have let's take a look at cropping back by selecting the crop probably this side is the guiding factor we need to be something like that so what have we got here one two three four five six seven eight nine and a half squares one two three four five six seven eight more or less nine and a half squares there as well but I need a bit more here one two three four five six seven I need a couple more so I'm going to bring this out a little bit I think that's probably close and the same thing well you get the idea I'm going to hit the tick to commit that change now what we need is another layer to produce the background so let's create it and drag it to the bottom of the stack a new blank layer and of course we've got to decide on our border color and we've looked at creating frames and borders so there's a number of different ways we can use to do that I could as I've said I think a few times now sample one of the gray colors from within the image alt backspace will flood that color and of course we've got quite a smooth computer generated color there so if we wanted to add a bit of noise well now's the time perhaps to think about that 5% of Gaussian monochrome noise I'll live with that for the moment but I also need to put a line around the outside of this layer and of course it has to be underneath this because the line is going to go around all sides but not across here now I can possibly do that by going down to the effects here and putting the stroke on in that fashion I'm going to make the stroke line quite bright maybe not pure white but certainly brightish how much do I need to give it well I've got three pixels here and I need to place my line on the outside because the outside is this side of the picture not this side if it goes this side we're going to see it now that line is a bit on the small side so just for demo purposes I'll double it up to six so we can see it more clearly and click OK of course I could select my background and levels and do a bit of work on adjusting that but there we have our breakout now you'll notice that we can still see that little line there but when I zoom in it disappears and I'm going to suggest that as soon as I flatten those three layers together it'll disappear then too now that was a pretty quick process with the previous image so let's have another go with the flower here going to remove the lock the same as before pick up my rectangular marquee tool click and drag to decide what's going to be over the border control X to cut control V to paste and I'll place that back into position I'll turn this one off just for a moment because what we've got to do is to cut out all of the green here so I'm going to pick up my magic wand here and we can click into this area and see if we can add one selection to another you see the little plus I've got alongside the magic wand that's that option at the top left of the screen add one selection to another now that looked pretty easy to do but let's have a look around the edge you can see that mm, I've got a little bit there that needs adjusting probably right the way down to there so let me pick up my polygonal lasso tool but I need to remove from a selection so what I'm going to do here is click inside and I'm going to in fact I think I need this bigger I'm going to click click in short steps to get that curve around the edge this is the amazing thing isn't it that we've got a tool that makes straight lines and we can go around curves without any difficulty I'll come down here hold the space bar and shift I can see an edge all the way down there I think 
and then join up to this point and we've repaired that piece of the selection let's have a look around there carefully we've got to be careful with this selection because we are drawing attention to this part of the flower that's hanging over the border so if we're going to draw attention to it then we really need to make sure the selection is good and this is the one that also needs my attention so I'll come from this position here so we need to come up here click 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 shorter steps around the curve you can make the image much bigger sometimes when you're doing this but I'm always conscious of taking up video time but even doing it like this it's probably going to be fine for our needs join up at the start so there we have our selection now I could do the same as I did before I could give this a small amount of feather maybe one pixel or 0 0.5 okay to that now I can safely cut away what remains in the background there let's turn the other layer on and there we've got the basis of what we had before now we just need space all around the outside I suppose another way we could come at this would be to do it directly from the crop because we can just drag the crop out but the important thing here is again one two three four five six maybe seven so we would want seven all the way round, and you may even want to have a slightly bigger one at the bottom and of course once we get to this stage all we really need to do is to concentrate on our border and what color we're going to create that you can see I am quite a fan of cloning a color but I think that's going to be a little too dark but we'll see you can see it's a little bit too colorful but sometimes if you do sample color and apply it into a frame then of course all you can do is bring up the hue and saturation first of all you can take the saturation off so you still get the green you do get the opportunity to brighten it a little bit and then of course we've got exactly the same issue as before we select the middle layer here and give it a stroked line just to finish things off we'll use exactly the same settings as before although they look a little bit bright here so we could tone them down by choosing a mid-tone grey but you get the idea of how we create the breakout effect 